Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be showing you how to update your rooted Nexus 6P from pretty much any uh, version of Android, whether on your the MTC 19L Marshmallow firmware, or of course the MPD 90G, or even the NRD 90M. I may have said one of those wrong, but that's fine. So currently I'm on the um, MPD 90G, and we're gonna be updating this to the NRD 90U which is the September update and pretty much the official release of Android Nougat for the 6P in terms of factory images and full OTAs are being available. So I'll be showing you how to update the version of this to the latest one using Flashboot this time because we've been using Flashfire a lot recently. So to do this, we're going to head back to our computer and we're going to need to download a couple of files here. So first things first, we're going to download the Android Tools zip file. This just contains your ADB EXE, your Fastboot EXE, and your two DLLs, which is great. And we also have a checksum calculator that I've made quickly. And this is just to verify that our factory image has been downloaded properly after talking in the comments with someone that has previously watched my videos. So that's also cool. So the next thing we need to download is the factory image, of course, once you've downloaded those two uh, previous files there. Uh, that being the checksum calculator is optional. You don't have to do it, but I guess it's recommended. So here we just need to check the terms and conditions, agree with those, and you can click on Angular for Nexus 6P here on the side, or you can scroll down a little bit and find it. So here's the NRD 90U, and you can click on this blue link to download it. So I'm going to save everything into one folder, namely this Android folder, I already got everything downloaded. So just save it all to one folder so we can keep things uh, nice and neat. So we also need to download the latest version of TWRP, it was just released on the 1st of September, so that was 3.0.2-2 all you need to make sure is to double check that you have the latest one and if not download the latest one and we'll flash it during the process so here we're going to download, click on this big download link not the smaller one up here for the MD5 we want the actual image file just click on that and it will download it last but not least we're going to download the latest version of SuperSU which is 2.78 here with the I think I've read the official um, NuGet support so which is great so we're going to download that as well. So once you've downloaded everything, you should have these five files. So that goes without saying. We have our Android tool zip, our factory image, our checksum calculator, TWRP, and SuperSU, the latest version. So just download the latest version of all these files, which uh, is probably the best idea. And we're going to leave this web page open so we can check our checksums. So to do that first, we're going to open the csc.exe and I'll just open up something like this and all you need to do is drag our factory image over to the SHA256 uh, check kind of gray box and you're gonna wait there for a little bit since it's uh, quite a big file it may say not responding like it is now but just give it a couple seconds and it should calculate the sum and all that so while that's doing that we're going to go back to our web page you can see it's done and what we're gonna do is copy our or the SHA256 checksum on the Google website I'm gonna copy that go back to our program and paste it in the compare with field and if it turns green then you got it right if it's black then it's not all right so once it's green um, you're pretty much guaranteed that this uh, you've downloaded the proper and the full version of the zip without any damages so we won't need the browser anymore we're going to take a look at these files so first things first we're going to extract our android tools folder so we're going to open that up and extract all the four files in there so that's our adb and fastboot so we can close that and next thing we are going to extract some parts of our factory image so I'm going to move this over to the side here I'm going to open up the factory image open up the folder that's inside the angler nrd 90 u folder so these are the things we're going to extract we're going to extract the radio and bootloader images just those two and drag them outside I'm going to head back over and open up the image dash angler dash nrd 90 u zip file just open it like that double click it might be different for other unarchiving un utilities but on WinRAR it does this and what we're going to do next is extract the boot image. So select the boot image, the system image, and the vendor image. And basically, you're just going to drag them outside just like that as well. So this shouldn't take too long. So while that's doing that, we're going to head over to our device and we're going to copy the latest version of SuperSU onto it while our files are copying. So we're going to plug it in and we're going to have to set the USB mode for file transfers as well. So unlock your phone and you're going to have to change USB charging this device to transferring files and it should reconnect your device to the computer 
So you can see this is finished uh, copying, or it might be copying still. Yes, it is. So once that is done, you can close all the uh, WinRAR windows or your 7-zip or whatever. And you want to make a new window here. I'm just going to exit Steam. And so you can make a new window and you want to go to your phone, shared internal storage. And you can see I already have these uh, the latest version of SuperSU, but you would just copy it to this empty space. I'm going to copy and replace. But if you don't already have the latest version there, yeah, that's fine. I'm going to go delete some stuff that we don't need just to clean it up a little bit. And it's probably best to delete some old versions of SuperSU if you've got them lying around. So once that's copied, you can close your device's window and we can now get to the flashing part. So that pretty much, you want to go to your device, you want to unplug the cable. Oops. You're going to unplug the cable and what you're going to do is power off the device. So hold the power button and tap on power off and we're going to boot it into the bootloader. So we disconnect this just so it doesn't go into a battery charging mode, which takes a few extra seconds to get out of, and it's just a hassle that we don't want. So what we want to do is hold the power button and volume down buttons together until we reach the bootloader, which looks a little bit like that. So just like that. And at that point, you want to plug in. And as usual, I always forget to mention that you'll need the drivers installed already. And I do have a video outlining how to do that from scratch if you'd like to see. It's in the more info right under the driver download links. So with that, with our device in the bootloader already, what we're going to do is open up a new command window. So I'm going to move this over to the side. Actually, I won't. What you're going to do when you want to open up that new CMD window, we're going to hold shift on our keyboard and right click on an empty space. I'm going to hit open command window here. Now that'll pop up real nice. I'll just make it a little bit thinner and drag this on the side just like that. So we can kind of see both sides uh, pretty well. So to do, uh, first thing we need to do is check that our device is properly configured for fastboot. So we're gonna type in fastboot devices and that will give us, so that will return our serial number and the state that it's in. It's in fastboot of course, which is right. And if you don't see anything there, please double check your drivers, make sure they're installed properly and check if any other fastboot commands work like rebooting back into the bootloader so just make sure your drivers work and you can see your serial number, which is probably the best indicator of your device being connected. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna flash the radio image. We're gonna start with that. So we're gonna type in fastboot flash radio, R-A-D-I-O, and we'll leave a space on the end just there. And we're gonna drag in our radio image onto the command window and hit enter. Now that'll flash the radio real quick and yep. Once that's done, all you need to do is type in, or reboot your phone back into the bootloader. So you can either do this by pressing, selecting reboot bootloader and pressing the power button, or you can do it by a fast boot by typing fast boot reboot dash bootloader, just like that. So that's gonna reboot our device into the bootloader. And once that's in, we're gonna flash the bootloader now. So we're gonna type in fast boot flash bootloader, leave a space in the end and drag in our bootloader image and we're going to hit enter and now once that's done we're going to hit our up arrow key on our keyboard twice to go back to previous commands like so or you could just type in fastboot reboot dash bootloader again so we're going to have to reboot into the bootloader once more so the new one takes effect and you can double check the version at the top here it says 0 0.358 it's a little bit small but um that's what it says so just to make sure that your bootloader is actually updated properly so now we're going to go into the flashing process so we're going to start off by flashing the new boot image. So I'm gonna do that by typing fast boot, flash boot, leave a space in the end as usual, and drag in our boot image, hit enter. And once that is done, we're gonna move on to wiping or formatting the cache. So we can do this by typing fast boot format cache, just like that, and hit enter. And once that is done, we're gonna move on to flashing the system image. So we're gonna type in fast boot flash system, leave a space on the end, and we're gonna drag in our system image and hit enter. Now this will take a long time as it's two and a half gigabytes um, in size. So yeah, that's a fair bit of copying. So I'll leave this and I'll probably fast forward this process just so you can see what it kind of looks like. And um, I'll be back when the system image finishes flashing. Okay, this is just writing our last kind of system part and it's finished. It took a minute and a half, which is not too bad. 
So next up, we're going to flash our latest version of TWRP. So I'm going to type in fastboot. Oops. I'm going to type in fastboot flash recovery as TWRP is a custom recovery and we're just going to flash it in place of the recovery. And last things last, and we're going to flash the vendor image. So we're going to type in fastboot flash vendor. Leave a space on the end, drag in our image and hit enter. Not quite as big as the system image, but still requires a little bit of time to flash. So once this is done, we can just pretty much head back over to our device and we're going to press volume down until we reach recovery mode in red and we're going to hit the power button. Now this will boot us into the updated version of TWRP, which will, I guess, probably work, probably work with this release of Nougat, which is great. We're going to wait for that to boot up and we're going to flash SuperSU. I'm going to enter our pan to decrypt. So this could be your passcode or your password uh, when you on your lock screen. It's the same one. So once it's uh, finished decryption and is mounting your mounted your data partition, I'm going to tap on install, and you want to scroll all the way down and locate that super SU that we copied over. I'm going to tap on it, and then we're going to swipe to confirm flash. So this will extract all its uh, files and stuff where it needs to. It's going to patch our boot image to work with the systemless compatibility, um, which is great. And once that's done, our phone will or will be prompted to reboot our phone. And it's telling us there that we should expect some boot loops and all that. And it generally takes, you have to enter your pattern twice pretty much. And uh, I'll, be, I'll be showing that, but fast forwarded. So I'll be seeing you guys afterwards. And when our phone's booted up, we'll try out some root, like rooted apps and we'll see that Super SU still works and maybe we'll have a look at a root checker app as well. Alrighty, so our device is booted back up and we're going to have a look at some root apps. So you can see everything is still preserved and uh, well, let's just check the version number. And so if you had night mode on before, it carries over, which is uh, pretty cool. But otherwise there is a way to enable this if you didn't have it already. So we can scroll down here and we're on the NRD90U and we're gonna check out SuperSU if that's installed here. Yes, it is. And you can see that it's already allowed BusyBox, Flashfire and Lucky Patcher, super user access. So I'm gonna chuck a look at um, Flashfire here just to check that it works. And I might as well turn off airplane mode to hopefully we can start downloading our root checker so we can quickly have a look at that. Alrighty, so Flashfire is working its business, which is great as usual. And let's check out our root checking app. And we're opening. I'm just going to put it back on airplane mode so I don't get any notifications. So it's just telling us that there's just a verify root. And we're going to tap on verify root here. I'm going to hit grant. And would you believe it? Well, you should. Anyway, so our Nexus 6P is rooted on Android 7.0. I already showed you the version number, or the build number of Android. So there we go. Thank you guys for watching. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave it down below, as uh, I will be trying to answer most of them. And of course, if you have any other suggestions, I already got a few that I would like to try out probably after my exams, which is in about a month away. Big stuff happening. So thanks for sticking by and I'll talk to you in the next one.